Alright, now we're going to get into section 8.4 on systems of nonlinear equations and two variables. Uh, back in uh, section 1 of this chapter, we did systems of linear equations and two variables. But a nonlinear system is a system in which one or more of the equations is nonlinear. So they might both be nonlinear, or you know, or you might have one that's a line and one that's something else, as I've tried to show with some examples here that are, I've drawn out. Now remember that a solution to a system is an ordered pair in which it satisfies all the equations in the system. But when you have a nonlinear system, or excuse me, a linear system, there were three possibilities. When you have a nonlinear system, uh, it is possible that you could have five different things occur. You might have, for example, a, uh, a system in which graphically there is no point of intersection, so there are no solutions. Or you might have, as this example shows, you might have something like a circle and a line, and the line is tangent, so there's only one point of intersection, there's only one solution. Or here with a line and a circle again, the, the line is a secant and intersects it in two places, so this would have two solutions at both of these ordered pairs. Now I've tried to draw, not very well, but I tried to draw a circle and a parabola in which both of the equations are nonlinear. And I try to draw in such a way that my parabola, that the vertex is tangent here at the, uh, with the circle, and then the, uh, the two uh, parts of, I shouldn't call them branches, but the two parts of the parabola here uh, intersect uh, the circle at points. So there are three points of intersection. Or if I just dip that down and translate it down a little bit, I could have as many as four points. But that's it for uh, systems, two by two systems. It's just that they're not necessarily. Uh, uh, both linear, they're going to be maybe one, but not both, and in some cases, neither one's going to be linear. So I have some examples that I'm going to work out for you. Now, of course, it helps if you have a diagram, but in many of these cases, uh, the equations that you're going to be given are not functions. I said an example A, the top one is a linear function, but the bottom one is a circle, and that's not a function. So on your graphing calculator, it might be a little di bit difficult to uh, graph this, you would have to solve for y and consider both parts, of both semicircles, once when it's plus, once when it's minus, because you're going to have to take the square root of both sides eventually to solve for y. So in this case, having a, a diagram most certainly would help, but it might be kind of a hassle to put on your graphing calculator. Just be patient with it so that you get both parts. Now, we have a line and a circle, and we have three examples of a line and a circle. Here, they're drawn out. Now, those are not necessarily that those particular equations, uh, there's no scale set, but this is the idea. I'm going to either have zero, one, or two possible solutions. So what I would suggest that when one of them is linear and the other one is not, take the linear and solve for either x or y, and it's probably easier to solve for y because I'm going to have to divide. So if I take 2x plus y equals 5, if I subtract 2x from both sides, I get y is equal to 5 minus 2x. Now I'm going to use substitution by plugging this in for y in this other equation. So I would have x squared plus in for y, I would have the quantity 5 minus 2x, and that quantity gets squared equals 50. So I have x squared, now I'm going to square this binomial, so that would be plus 25 minus 20x plus 4x squared, that's this, I squared it out, equals 50. I'm going to bring everything to one side, to the left side. I'm also going to combine like terms here. I'm going to have 5x squared minus 20x. Now I have plus 25. If I subtract 50 from both sides, I'm going to have a minus 25 here in their standard form, but even better. If I divide through both sides by 5, I get something that I can more readily recognize to be able to factor. And this does factor x minus 5 and x uh, plus 1. So if I set each factor equal to 0, I get 5, and I get negative 1. Now, I'm only going to get two points, because it's going to look something like this. I mean, the line doesn't necessarily look like that, a little bit. But I'm going to have something uh, where I'm only going to have two points. And the reason I bring that up, because it looks like I have two x values. I should have two points. I should have 5 something, and I should have negative 1 something. If you go and take the 5 and or the negative 1 and you plug back into here and then solve for y, you're going to get two values because of the y squared. 
Don't plug it back into the quadratic, plug it back into the linear. Every time do this uh, when you have one of the equations being linear. So I'll plug 5 in here. Actually, I'll plug 5 in here. So y is equal to 5 minus 2 times 5, or negative 5, and I have y is equal to 5 minus 2 times negative 1, which is positive 7. So when x is 5, y is negative 5. When x is negative 1, y is 7. Now, if you take these and you plug them back into both equations, you should see that they both that both of these satisfy it, and I have these two answers. I'm going to write it kind of like a solution set here. I'm going to write 5, negative 5, and negative 1, 7. Okay. So this is, like I said, this is going to be something like this, where you're going to have a circle and a line, and they cross in two points. Now, over here... Here's another circle, center 0, 0, radius the square root of 90, 3 square root of 10. But in this case, I have the square root function, which kind of looks like half of a sideways parabola. It kind of looks something graphically like this. And you've got a circle whose center is 0, 0. You can see right from here that you should only have one solution. Now, that's a really terrible sketch, but it's good enough to give me an idea of what's going on. So, again, Notice that this equation has y all by itself. When that's the case, use this and substitute in. I'm going to plug this in for y right here. In for y, so that would be the square root of x, and that's squared, equals 90. The square root of x squared is x, and I'll subtract 90 from both sides, so I can kind of get this done in one, uh, one quick step here. This does factor, which is really nice when they factor. So this is x plus 10, and looks like x minus 9. Now, if you start looking at this, you start thinking, uh-oh, he's going to come up with two answers. Well, you'll see here in a second that one of them is extraneous. One of them is not going to work. So I set the x plus 10 equal to 0. I set the x minus 9 is equal to 0. Here I get x is negative 10 if I subtract 10 from both sides, and here I get x is positive 9 if I add 9 to both sides. This one is no good. You can't plug negative 10 in here for x. That would give you the square root of a negative number, and that's not real value, and we're looking at only real values. So this guy we can automatically toss right out. My answer is going to be 9 comma something. Plug the 9, not back into here. That's where you pick up the two values. Plug it into this guy. 9 goes in for x. I have y is equal to the square root of 9, which is 3. And that, I'll write it as a solution set would be my solution. So the first example had two, the second example has one. These last two examples, as you can see because they're circled in red, come off of the semester exam review. I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to solve both of these, but I think one of these is kind of a special case. It's been a while since I've done these. Now in this case and in this case, there's a couple of approaches. But the most logical approach to me would be because of the way it's set up, if I use the addition method and add straight down, the y squareds cancel, and I end up with x squared plus x is equal to 2. I get a quadratic equation that has, um, well, it's one step away from being in, in standard form. It should have two values, two solutions here. So this is x squared plus x if I subtract 2 from both sides. Now think about this. Here's another circle. All right, center is 0, 0, radius is the square root of 5. This guy here, this is a parabola. This parabola here, if I rewrite this just slightly here as x equals y squared minus 3, this opens to the right, and its vertex is at, uh, let's see, it would be at negative 3. Let's see, right, do I have this right? i got to be careful here. Yeah, it would be at negative 3, 0. Now remember, the radius here is the square root of 5. So that's about 2.236068 to the left of 0. So negative 3 would be out here. It's going to look something like this. I should have four solutions to this uh, system here. You, if, you, if you can make a quick sketch, like I said, either using technology or scratch paper, it will give you a good idea of what's going on, and you'll be looking for these answers. Now, in this case, it looks like I'm only going to get two answers here because this factors x plus 2, x minus 1. And that gives me x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. And that gives me x is negative 2 
and x is positive 1. But if I take these guys here, and let me erase these slashes so that I can see what I originally started with as a system here, okay? And I go to plug back in. Notice that in both cases here, I've got to plug in for x. I'm going to have a y squared. That's going to give me two values for each one of these x's. That's how I get the four points. So be very careful, and it doesn't matter really which one you take, but I think that this one is maybe a little bit simpler because it's just x. Plug negative 2 in here. Negative 2 minus y squared is equal to negative 3. If I was to add 2, I get the opposite of y squared is equal to negative 1. That gives me y squared is equal to positive 1. If I take the square root of both sides, I get the absolute value of y is equal to 1, so I have y is plus or minus 1. That means when x is negative 2, y could be positive 1 or negative 1. So down here, when x is negative 2, y could be 1 or negative 1. That gives me two points. That might be like this point here and this point here, because of the x being negative. Now, I'm going to have to kind of do this again, but this time I'll plug 1 in for x. See if I have room over here. 1 in for x into this guy right into here. 1 minus y squared equals negative 3. The opposite of y squared is equal to negative 4. y squared is equal to positive 4. Oop, y squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get the absolute value of y is equal to 2. So y is equal to plus or minus 2. And I get two more values here. Uh, here for x. That, that just looks cock but I think I did it right. So anyway, that's going to give me... Uh, remember, x was 1 here, so that's going to give me 1 positive 2 and 1 negative 2. And that would be my solution set. Now, you can verify this by taking these one at a time and substituting them in and see that it satisfies both of the equations in the system. So this one has four answers, probably something graphically like this. I think this is the special case. Let's see what happens. Now, in this problem, I have um, what well, looks like, this looks like a, a hyperbola, and this looks like an ellipse. So all sorts of things can happen with a hyperbola and an ellipse. Now, um, conic sections are something that are going to be discussed, um, let's see, in a little bit more detail. I'm trying to remember what chapter that, that's in. It must be like chapter 9 or 10. And we'll be looking at that more in second semester. But you may remember that those that terminology and these kinds of equations from your, your algebra days. I am going to, first off, I'm going to rewrite this one. I'm going to put the x term first. I'm going to write negative 2x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use the addition method. I'm going to try to cancel out my x squares. I don't have an x or a y where I can isolate it and plug into the other. So in this case, I'm going to kind of use the idea of canceling by adding the sides. This needs to be a positive 2, so I'll multiply through both sides by positive 2. It's not the only way it can be done, but it's as good as any. Okay, so now, if I uh, add it down, I get 7y squared is equal to 14, y squared is equal to 2, so the square root of both sides would give me absolute value of y is equal to the square root of 2. y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, if I take the, uh, either one of these values and plug in, the first thing that's going to happen to my y is it's going to get squared. So I'm going to end up with uh, the square root of 2 or negative square root of 2 being squared. Let's just take the top equation. So let's plug in positive square root of 2. But it won't matter because even if it's negative square root of 2, it's going to be squared. It's going to be positive. So the same thing's going to happen here no matter which way I work this. So I'm going to get uh, the square root of 2 squared. In fact, just to show you, plus or minus, the, either one. When I square that, I'm going to get 2 minus 2x squared is equal to 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. Negative 2x squared is equal to 2. Divide by negative 2, I get x squared is equal to negative 1. Well, that can't happen. x squared can equal negative 1 because that's an imaginary number. That's i. So x would be positive or negative i. But that doesn't make sense because we're only looking at real value functions here, real value relations. 
So in this case, this is to indicate that I have a contradiction, that I have no solution. Graphically, if I'm not mistaken, I get something that maybe looks a little bit, now this is going to be really sloppy, but I get something that looks a little bit like this. I get an ellipse, and I get a hyperbola whose branches open above and below the ellipse, but don't intersect it. So there are no points of intersection. There are no solutions to this system. And you can see that right away when you hit this contradiction. That can't happen over the real values. So be looking for it because these kinds of special cases can occur.